Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on working with remote sensing with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and Virginia View. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. This video tutorial series builds on ongoing and previous collaborations and contributions provided by the USDA NIFA through the ADVANCE Project, the National Science Foundation, through the GeoTED UAS Project, the Ohio State University, and the Virginia Space Grant Consortium. This video series is associated with the Remote Sensing with ArcGIS Pro second edition book. We will use Landsat 9 imagery in this series, and we'll also begin with Chapter 10. Links to resources for this video series, including free access to the textbook and to the videos for chapters 1 through 9, are available in the video description below. This chapter discusses band combinations and their use in ArcGIS Pro. We begin with a brief review of Landsat 9 spectral channels and a discussion of band combinations, spectral values for features on the surface of the Earth, and how different features can be identified using specific bands. Remember from prior chapters that each spectral channel in a Landsat 9 image, designated as a band for satellite imagery, is defined by its distinctive region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Each band is specifically tailored to help distinguish and observe specific features on the Earth's surface. Please see your text for an in-depth discussion of how different features on the surface of the Earth absorb, reflect, and re-emit radiation in different ways, and that using various band combinations to display the scene in color allows these dissimilar features to be more easily detected and identified. Be sure to read your text before proceeding to gain a full understanding of what we are demonstrating in this video and why. Let's begin by exploring band combinations of Landsat 9 imagery using ArcGIS Pro. Here I began with the Chapter 15 project, removed all but the subsetted composite image created from bands 2 through 7 in Chapter 15, and the 11 individual bands from the scene. You can remove those 11 bands if you'd like to. We will not use them in this chapter. Also in Chapter 15, we changed the processing environment extent, so be sure to reset that to the default by going to Analysis, Environments, and Reset under the Processing Extent. There are several ways to change the combination of bands for a composite image. We'll start with two default options. Select the composite image in Contents and go to the Raster Layer tab. Let's drop down Band Combination. Here you see three options, Natural Color, Color Infrared, and Custom. We'll talk about each one. If you point to an option, say Natural Color, you get a pop-up explanation of its meaning. Natural Color uses the visible range of wavelengths, red, green, and blue, what ArcGIS Pro calls bands 1, 2, and 3. This is a problem, though, since the bands we added to the composite begin with Landsat 9 Band 2, and Band 2 is blue, not red. Band 3 is green, not blue. And Band 4 is red. ArcGIS Pro defaults to red for Band 1, green for Band 2, and blue for Band 3. And those band numbers are unrelated to the spectral properties of the bands. Color Infrared uses wavelengths from the green and red visible wavelengths and from the near-infrared wavelength, which is not visible. Here again, the band designations in ArcGIS Pro don't correspond to the band sequence of Landsat 9, as band 5 should be associated with the near-infrared band, but it was renumbered as band 4 in ArcGIS Pro. The third option is Custom. We'll use this option to set a specific band combination and save it. Let's create the Landsat 9 natural color, which we use regularly. Set the custom parameters to band 3 for red, band 2 for green, and band 1 for blue. Name it Landsat 9 Natural Color and OK. Here you see the natural color image. Natural color uses the visible range of wavelengths, red, green, and blue, what ArcGIS Pro calls bands 1, 2, and 3 to display the image. Now we have a natural color 3 to 1 band combination Landsat 9 image. The image in the display window does now look more like features seen on the Earth. This is how a natural color or true color should appear. Let's use the custom setting again to create the band combination for Landsat 9 color infrared. 
you can refer to this website for some common band combinations. Remembering that the bands listed here refer to Landsat 9 bands, not ArcGIS Pro bands. Let's switch to Color Infrared that I just created. Using our composite image, the Landsat 9 bands for Color Infrared are 543. However, since we're using a composite image from Landsat bands 2 through 7, the Color Infrared image must use the 432 band sequence. Band 4 is red, band 3 is green, and band 2 is blue. Landsat 9's band 5, in this case labeled by ArcGIS Pro as band 4, is the near-infrared band. Normally, we can't see data from this segment of the electromagnetic spectrum, but we have arranged the near-infrared band so that ArcGIS Pro will display it in red. Using this band combination, healthy vegetation appears bright red. Healthy or more vigorous vegetation is highly reflective in the near-infrared band. That doesn't mean the land cover associated with pink hues is unhealthy vegetation. It's possible this vegetation could be less dense or less mature. This exemplifies the importance of in situ verification, or what we sometimes call ground truthing. Let's explore another option for changing band combinations of a composite image. Make sure you still have your composite image selected and open Symbology for the composite image. I have it open already, but recall that you can access Symbology from the Raster Layer tab on the ribbon or by right-clicking the layer in Contents and choosing Symbology. With Symbology, we can create any band combination we want using the drop-downs for the bands next to each color under Primary Symbology. And remember, humans are unable to see the near-infrared and other non-visible wavelengths, but with the software's help, we can display those in color to visualize them. For our image, the combination is 432. Let's change these to 321. Here you see the natural color for the image again. Let's compare the true color and infrared images. To do this, I added another composite image I created earlier, set it to color infrared, and now we'll turn on the swipe tool. The three ovals in the image indicate water bodies. The white oval is the new river. The new river is fairly evident in the natural color image, especially the southern wider portion of the river. Notice as I swipe, in the color infrared image below it, the river's entire course is very apparent. Now the green circle in the north is Carvin's Cove, a drinking water reservoir for the city of Roanoke. Carvin's Cove is barely visible in the natural color image, but is very prominent as I swipe through the color infrared image. Finally, Smith Mountain Lake is situated in the yellow circle. Now that we have pointed it out, you can make out the lake in the natural color image, but it is clearly evident in the color infrared image. Also, note that the lake is not all dark. Smith Mountain Lake is a reservoir, and north of the dam, the river flowing into the lake is heavily laden with sediment, which appears as a bright light blue in the image. What about vegetation? Green in the true color image is associated with vegetation. This is a summer image in Virginia, June 10th, 2023, you might recall, and within this region are extensive agriculture and forests, including both the national forest and a state forest. In the color infrared image, red shows the vegetative cover much more prominently. Now let's zoom in. The agriculture fields appear as lighter shades of green in the true color image and as various shades of pink in the color infrared image. Let's try another area of the scene, the city of Roanoke. Roanoke is the largest urban area in Southwest Virginia and within this Landsat scene. Can you identify any features within the city such as roads, buildings, and maybe an airport? Let's explore the city using color infrared. Roanoke looks a lot different. The Roanoke River runs through Roanoke southeast to Smith Mountain Lake. The river is barely visible in the natural color image. While you're here, pause this video and try to identify a golf course, the fairways, and putting greens. 
What about sand traps? Would sand traps be displayed as bright red on a color infrared image? Now let's try a band combination of 5, 6, 8. This is impossible, of course, since we don't have band 8 in our composite image. But using the combination 4, 5, 3 will be similar. All of the bands associated with the 5, 6, 8 image are outside the visible spectrum, but we can visualize them using the colors of the software. The river channel is now a distinct line meandering on the south side and all the way through the city. Each combination of bands make a difference in what is visible to us. You can even display the same band twice, as in a 6, 4, 6 combination. This band combination makes the water bodies even more prominent. We can even see some smaller water bodies barely visible in the color infrared combination. Continue to explore different band combinations for the whole scene and other localized regions by zooming in and using the charts and tables in your text. You are now ready to proceed to the next set of chapters, which discuss image enhancement techniques.